Hi everybody, it's John, and here is my uh, week five summary. This week, I feel like we went from norming to storming, and I'm looking forward to performing in terms of um, group learning and uh, interaction. While we talked about several topics, the obvious focus was on outsourcing support overseas and the effects of that decision on various stakeholders including company owners, employees, shareholders, customers, vendors, the outsourcing service supplier, and the various countries involved. However, most of the discussion was about one stakeholder only, the customer, and that's a little bit sad. In reality, the customer can be satisfied if the reasons for their upset is resolved, and most of these are resolvable. For instance, language can be studied and improved upon, uh, technical skills can be learned, and improvisation can become second nature for any seasoned call handler. Uh, there's a point at which scripts can be thrown away, and since outsourced support is still in its infancy, uh, that time hasn't arrived yet. Uh, we're, we're talking about outsourcing has been in use for maybe two to five years really actively. We're, we're just starting to see the effects of outsourcing, and so um, it's not surprising that all the kinks, quote-unquote, are not worked out yet. The other issue I heard, which is harder to satisfy, was the dislike for outsourcing itself because of the loss of American jobs, etc. If those jobs are replaced for Americans with new and better jobs, outsourcing may be seen 100 years from now as a catalyst for a great shift in the quality of American technology jobs. The people who lost the technology support jobs in America may take the things that they learned in that service and gain and apply new creative skills that command better, more enjoyable, more intrinsically rewarding jobs. Or outsourcing could be seen as a failed experiment that either wasn't given a proper chance or was not the right thing at the right time to be successful. I don't think that's going to happen myself. Uh, despite my own job being threatened by outsourcing, everybody who's working in technology support right now is, is in a way, threatened by outsourcing, I truly feel that it's a motivator for me to achieve a level of service that cannot be easily emulated or improved upon by somebody who's a thousand miles away, for example. I focus on gaining personal relationships with the people I support, looking beyond simple answers to problems to develop improvements to workflows, and searching for opportunities to strengthen the interpersonal aspects of the work that I do and the relationships that I have at work. So it will not be easy for somebody to answer, why couldn't we just, you know, have John's extension ring someone's desk in Spain? I, I, if somebody asks that question now, there are answers that come to mind about why that can't happen. Um, I could also work in conjunction with outsourced supporters so that simpler issues and questions could be answered by them to free me up to do research and to troubleshoot much more detailed problems, more interesting and rewarding work, and secondary tiered issues. In fact, this is very much like the existing model we have at Ryder with our help desk, except that our help desk is locally employed. At any rate, the issues that people here have experienced with outsourcing may simply be experiential growing pains that are natural for outsourcing. And if they are resolved, outsourcing could be a strong way of providing support at a relatively low cost, uh, which allows workers at home to focus on primary work, uh, rich, deep, great technology work. Thanks to all who engaged in debate this week, and I hope you all have a great week coming up.